All right, everyone, it's my pleasure to introduce <coughs> Ariel Lassery. Uh, Ariel serves as a vice chair of the MIPI A5 Working Group. For more than a decade, he has been actively engaged in standardization activities across multiple SDOs, including MIPI Alliance, where he has been an active contributor to multiple working groups since 2009. His 20 to 30 minute presentation is on mass and it's what is new in the mass connectivity framework. As a reminder to participants, if you do have questions, please click the three buttons or the three dots on the bottom right of your screen and then use the Q&A feature to ask and Ariel will address them at the end of his presentation. With that, Ariel, please go ahead and start your presentation. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, gents, for the kind introduction and good afternoon to everybody. So today we introduce you uh, to the MIPI Automotive Seller Solution, also called uh, MAS. And more specifically, we will look at uh, what is new in the MAS connectivity framework. So uh, I will start with an overview of uh, MAS, including the status. Then uh, we will review the uh, common end-to-end -end, uh, MAS model for sensors and displays before diving into more details on how MIPI MAS is addressing functional safety for sensors with the camera service extension and the command and control interface service extension. And then I will shortly review what is new with the display service extensions uh, before concluding and opening the floor for the Q&A. So um, let's start with the MIPI Automotive Seller Solution, also called MAS. So, uh, what it is all about, huh? um, MAS. So, um, so MAS uh, basically uh, provides a framework for end-to-end -end, uh, automotive seller solution, from the sensor to the ECU and from the ECU to the display. It includes the AFI as well as the protocol for sensors and the displays, and it supports both bridge AFI and integrated AFI configuration. And Rajkumar will provide uh, more detail later on the AFI in the next session. So in this figure, it illustrates uh, where mass uh, is present in the car, for example, in automotive ECUs, in uh, ADAS or infotainment system, or it can be also found in uh, sensors such as uh, camera, radar, or LIDAR, and of course, also in uh, displays. So, next. <clears throat> so uh, here's an uh, example of uh, mass uh, supported topology. Um, so uh, on the left side, we have uh, an example for camera sensor aggregation, uh, where you can have uh, multiple uh, sensor uh, connected with uh, AFI to an aggregator on the ECU side. And, um, uh, and in there, you have end-to-end -end protection <clears throat> from each of the sensor uh, with CSI2 to the uh, uh, ECU uh, on the ECU side through the aggregator uh, bridge. So this is one example. On the right side, you can see an another example of uh, uh, ECU that is driving multiple uh, display. And by the way, these are heterogeneous displays. So you have a DSI display as well as uh, embedded display port display. And <clears throat> so you can see on this line, ah, maybe I'll show you my pointer. Why can I pick up the pointer? So, uh, okay, I don't find the pointer. It's the top right, Ariel, where the little squiggle, if you go to the top right of your screen, you should be able to see the annotation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. after that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, okay, so I don't have the pointer. Don't don't worry. Um, okay, I have no pointer. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> they, uh, uh, there's uh, one stream of uh, display data coming out of the uh, uh, ECU, and this stream uh, have a multiple uh, stream for all of the display in the DESI chain, and and there is end-to-end uh, -end protection from the ECU uh, for each of the stream directly to the target uh, display. Uh, so end-to-end -end protection to the first display, end-to-end uh, -end protection to the second, and to the third uh, display there. 
So that's uh, just an example of possible topology. Um, now, um, this is the mass uh, stack diagram uh, on which we represent all the specification we have and how they are uh, ordered in a stack uh, diagram. Um, so at the base, we can see we have the uh, common uh, physical layer uh, with the A5, uh, which has the uh, physical sublayer and the data link layer. And this is common to all the protocols um, there. Then above the A5, you have the uh, PALS or the protocol adaptation layers. Uh, so each protocol, um, MIPI or non-MIPI protocol, they have a specific uh, uh, protocol adaptation layer. And then we have, uh, you can see there are uh, multiple stack. There's one stack for uh, CSI2 for everything which is sensor, camera, leaders. There's another stack for the MIPI uh, display, uh, everything which is above uh, DSI2, and there's uh, another stack for the VESA uh, display. And there's uh, the, the fourth one are all the supporting interfaces, which are all the other sideband signaling that uh, may uh, uh, share the same uh, AFI link uh, together with the main uh, uh, protocol stacks. And so, and above this uh, uh, protocol adaptation layer, we have the, the, the protocol, as I uh, mentioned before. And above the protocol, at the protocol application layer, we have the uh, service extension, protocol service extension specification that include uh, functional safety and security. So there's the MIPI functional safety um, uh, and MIPI security specification. And we have one service extension for camera, which is a CSE. And we have another uh, service extension for display that can be used by both for MIP display and uh, Visa display. Um, yeah. And uh, now uh, the framework is almost completed. Almost everything has been released. Uh, and the main focus is really uh, on the security. Uh, this is why I uh, put it uh, in uh, purple here, uh, this is what uh, we are making a big effort. But okay, so let's uh, move on and see what is the actual status. Huh? So uh, these are the uh, the different uh, specification uh, we have. So on the left side, you can see all the adopted uh, specification. Um, it covers A5 10, 11, as well as the number of adaptation layers. Uh, and so these are the first version for the service extension specification, which are mainly focusing on functional safety for sensor and display, along with a lot of adaptation layer. Then on the completely on the right side, uh, you see um, the supporting document like uh, application note, uh, which are published and upcoming application note, which will be published uh, very soon. They are already uh, completed inside the working group. Um, and the PAL CSI2, which is the protocol adaptation layer for CSI2, uh, next version 1.1 that adds uh, time stamping and synchronization for sensors. And this is uh, the final stage of the adoption process. So I expect it also to be published very soon. Um, and now where we are working on, uh, maybe this is the important, uh, interesting part here, is what is under development. So you can see where there's a number of new specifications um, let's have first a look at the POA, which is the power over A5. Uh, here we split uh, the, we, we take, we've taken out the power over A5 specification from the A5 spec and made a standalone document. And Raj Kumar uh, will explain uh, later about this. Uh, we have a new adapt protocol adaptation layer for SPI. This, the work has been uh, almost completed in the working group. So we expect uh, entering adoption process in the next weeks. So, um, and we have uh, uh, PAL I3C, which is going to be a completely new uh, specification. We expect it to be available next year. And the MIPI security, as I explained before, this is one of the uh, main focus of uh, MIPI, is to make the MIPI security specification framework. And um, Rick will talk about that uh, later. Now, we have also um, added new specification like CCISE. And I will come to that later. This is command, command and control interface service extension. Um, and as you see, CSE 2.0, we add security and some other fancy thing that I will talk about later. And in the display service extension, we add uh, uh, advanced functional safety uh, feature and some other feature before 
uh, we will include the security in the next version 2.0. So let me continue. Uh, so let's go now to the detail in the camera service extension. So CSE 1.0, which has been already released uh, maybe last year already, it provides already the end-to-end -end, uh, functional safety services. So, um, it is uh, using uh, message-based uh, functional safety uh, protection, where each CSI2 packet uh, is extended uh, with a, a SEP uh, service extension packet. I will talk about that later. It includes message counter and CRC, which are added per set. Um, other functional safety feature is test pattern generation and error injection. I will come to that later as well. And, and there is also so-called ESS-CCI protocol, uh, which is uh, protecting the control plane of the uh, CSI2 uh, over I2C. Now, this ESS-CCI protocol for protection of the control plane uh, we found out that this protocol is uh, useful to any other device that can use uh, I2C as a sideband control for any other device. So uh, MIPI decided to uh, put it out of the next version of the specification, CSC 2.0, and put it into a new specification, which is CCISE version 1.0. And now we call it CCISE. Uh, this is a separate specification. Uh, and it is the same uh, like it was in CSC 1.0. It provides end-to-end -end protection for the control plane. It is fully backward compatible to what we had in CSC 1.0, VSS, CCI. Uh, but in addition, we add also all the security services. Um, and CSC 2.0, the main focus is to add uh, security services uh, like uh, uh, authentication and optional encryption. Um, this is the main portion. And then we added some advanced functional safety feature for uh, frame-based protection with uh, FSET protocol and SEP over multiple messages. And I will explain that uh, later. Uh, for, uh, sorry, uh, the D, for the display service extension, um, so DSC 1.0, uh, similarly to the CSE, it is using uh, SEP for end-to-end uh, -end functional safety uh, service. It's using in a, uh, that in a similar way like uh, CSE, but in addition uh, of uh, supporting DSI2, it also provides SEP support for uh, external protocol like uh, VESA DisplayPort or uh, EDP. Um, it also provides uh, content protection uh, with HDCP with the IIA, which is uh, 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 HDCP independent uh, um, interface uh, adaptation by uh, DCP, LLC, um, in order to enable uh, uh, premium content protection also with DSI2. Um, so, and in DSC, as I mentioned before, we decided to make uh, intermediate step to add uh, advanced functional safety feature before going to the next version of DSC 2.0 in security. And I will uh, explain this advanced functional safety feature later on. And similar to CSE, we have also a FSET protocol and frame-based protection. Um, and in addition to that, we also have some audio forwarding service, because sometimes video is also going with audio. So we enable also these audio services. So let's move on and have a look uh, at end-to-end uh, uh, -end protection and what is the common model for both sensors and display. And before going into that, uh, talking about protection, um, here I'm looking with my uh, functional safety eyes uh, on that. Um, what are the functional safety requirements? So uh, MIPI has been following the requirements and the recommendation of the ISO 26262 uh, standard. And this is applied to AFI and all the associated uh, protocol. And these are specified to enable uh, system integration of uh, MIPI devices uh, in AZB or AZD system according to the safety goal of the specific applications. Um, and uh, this uh, Annex D of uh, the standard uh, provides some recommendation uh, for communication bus safety mechanism. And some of them are relevant for hardware, some other for software, and uh, other mechanism are natively supported uh, by the uh, protocol uh, that we have in our uh, MIPI specification, like CSE or DSE. 
So, uh, so what is the common model? So this is what we call the one to five uh, model, which is the reference uh, topology model for mass. Uh, it identifies the five uh, functional component and reference topology that need to be considered uh, when we are talking about end-to-end -end functional safety and end-to-end -end safety protection. And in this model, we look at both the data path, uh, the data plane, and the control plane. Huh? So the data protections perform end-to-end -end from the data source, which is the component number five in case of uh, camera, uh, but is component number one in case of display. And from the source to the sink, and the sink is either the uh, number one in case of camera or the, the display in case of display. Um, and we also look at the uh, control plane, as I mentioned. Um, and any combination of this uh, reference topology uh, can be there. So we can have, uh, with the CSE and DSE spec, end-to-end um, -end protection uh, directly over C5 or D5 without any A5 or any bridge, or we can have it with integrated A5 without any bridge, or we can have it with bridge on one side or bridge on the other side uh, only, or bridges on both sides, and with any forwarding element in between. And this is what we've been considering uh, when looking at end-to-end uh, -end protection. So we have uh, basically three data service protocols for providing this end-to-end -end protection. So uh, at first, the data plane is protected with uh, two protocols. One protocol is the SEP, which is basically a message-based uh, protection uh, protocol, and the other one is uh, FSED, which is a uh, um, uh, frame-based service extension data protecting on a frame base, directly from number one, component one to component five, independently of how many bridges uh, you have in between. Um, and then on the control plane, uh, in case of DSI, the control plane is already protected because this is inbound with DSI tools, so it's protected with uh, SEP or FZ. But in case of camera, we have I2C, we have uh, CCI, and in case of A5 bridges, we have also I2C to control the A5 bridges. So for that, we can use the CCI SE, which is the command and control uh, interface service extension. And it provides also protection end-to-end but end-to-end -end means from component number one to component number five, which is the target, but also for component number one, from one to two, uh, from one to three, and from one to four. So there are multiple end-to-end -end targets here. So let's look at the, uh, what is uh, specific for SEP and FSET for the sensors in the camera service extension. So this is first uh, the uh, uh, CSE uh, layering, and uh, the, this uh, data service protocol I was talking about, uh, providing uh, security and functional safety service for protecting CSI2 and uh, CCI traffic in, uh, in the order of security first and uh, functional safety last. So this means the functional safety is wrapping the security uh, there um, in terms of uh, encapsulation. Uh, the, the receiver is performing the operation in the reverse order, so decapsulate first the functional safety uh, element, and uh, then uh, the, 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 the security element, like the MAC, uh, and so on. Um, and this layering applies to all the free data service protocol that we have, uh, but uh, the fellow management policy is defined by the system. Huh? So um, the the, on, the, on the receiver side, you can uh, uh, deal with that in parallel or in series, uh, uh, depending on the implementation and especially depending on the uh, application uh, safety goal and security goal, so different action can be taken. Yeah. But at least we have all the mechanism to detect a, a problem for functional safety and security. So how does it work with um, the SEP? Huh? Uh, the service extension packet. So this is an example of uh, uh, sensor pixel data, and each. So this is just symbolic. The colors here. There's no specific order. Um, so each line of this uh, uh, image uh, usually is contained into a CSI2 long packet uh, payload, and it has a packet header and packet footer. These are the typical CSI2 packet. 
Uh, then all the uh, content, the payload of the packet uh, is passed as it is to a SEP packet. And the packet header elements are um, set to a SEP header, which includes additional information like a message counter, a security uh, service, a source uh, identifier, uh, extended virtual channel, and so on. And there's also a SEP footer, which includes uh, the, the tags or the verification tags for uh, message authentication code, MAC, and uh, CRC uh, for functional safety. And um, after this, so the SEP is done directly at the protocol layer. Uh, so then you can have the protection end to end on the protocol level. Then when it goes to the, to the file, uh, the protocol adaptation layer is uh, uh, creating multiple chunks of uh, this very long SEP uh, packet. Um, and each of these the chunk uh, is having additional FI header and footer uh, with a message counter and CRC for functional safety. So the A packets are protected end-to-end, uh, -end, but only over the AFI network. They don't go the upper layer. And the set packet, they are protected end-to-end -end up to the protocol application layer. Um, so these are the uh, CSE uh, set tag mode. So basically, there are uh, two functional safety uh, tag mode for fun uh, one per message, which is the same like it was in CSE 1.0, and uh, one which is per frame. And there are three tag mode for security, one per message, one per data type, and one per frame. So in this image, you can see, uh, let's say the the white and the yellow uh, stuff on the, the left side, uh, these are the payload. Uh, in the middle, you have two major blocks. The first major block with A, B, C, D. Um, this is the security mode with set tag per message, where you can see you have a CRC on each message. And in the last three, this is the security tag mode with uh, CRC only at the end of the frame. And this is done, sorry, to provide a trade-off between uh, uh, tag overhead and error detection latency. Yeah? So uh, the next one is the uh, frame-based service extension data uh, protocol in CSE. So again, here we have all the pixel data in the, in the frame. And the difference with the FZ protocol is that it protects the CSI2 frame end to end at the frame uh, level, not every message uh, level. Uh, it is also completely agnostic to the file. Um, and it uses only legacy CSI2 packet. It does not use a set packet if SEP is not required. Um, and uh, what it does, it to the normal uh, uh, CSI2 uh, protocol stream, it adds these uh, three FZ messages here in orange, one in the beginning, which is the FZ control sync that provides some uh, frame information and security configuration. And in, uh, in the last one, there's the frame tag, which is the uh, overall uh, frame CRC and uh, frame MAC. Uh, out there, and optionally there is a, a, a FZ top tag, which is inserted after the top block. Uh, the top block being defined, uh, the first uh, uh, set of embedded data line before the first active pixel, and yeah, that's how it is defined. So it's possible to uh, check the the CRC and the uh, and the MAC after the top block has come to determine if uh, the receiver wants to continue to process the frame or not. This is why it is optional. Um, another functional safety feature which is interesting is the built-in self-test and diagnostic. Uh, that's important to increase the uh, diagnostic level um, by using some uh, test pattern generation and uh, fault injection so that we can save the functional safety system whether it can recognize a fault uh, that have been uh, generated, if we can detect that. And the, the test pattern can be applied at any time. So during the initialization, during the runtime, or every n number of frame. 
So the CSE standard specified five uh, standard pattern and the sensor vendor can add uh, additional specific pattern. And to have the diagnostic, also A5 provide uh, A5 beast where uh, the beast generate A5 packet and, uh, and there's also beast A5 packet monitoring so that you can check each uh, pop uh, element on the, on the link uh, of the, over the A5 network. Um, so if we go to the command and control service extension, uh, this is the control plane. As I mentioned, this is used for um, protecting the control plane. And this is CISE support control of the camera control interface over I2C, but also to control A5 bridges and forwarding element. So if I want to program my, um, um, for example, my routing table in the forwarding element or configuration of bridges, and uh, somebody maliciously want to attack them, uh, then by adding the CCISE, we can add some uh, uh, measures to, uh, uh, to, to prevent uh, malicious uh, uh, misconfiguration of uh, the bridges. Yeah? Um, and also any other connected device that is uh, controlled via s c can use this protocol. So basically each s c message with CCI uh, are extended with tags. Uh, and so we have a functional safety tag, which include the message counter and the CRC. And we have also security tag, which include uh, also a security message counter and the MAC, which is mes message notification code. And there are different uh, separate tags for read and write messages. And there are two different uh, CCI SE verification mode. The first one is per transaction, where each uh, I, uh, CCI I C transaction uh, is uh, followed by the tags, and the tags are uh, immediately verified by the target or by the controller. Um, and there's a second mode, which is per frame, where the tags are not transmitted over the I C interface. Uh, the traffic is regular as usual, uh, but they are calculated both on the SOC side. Uh, on the controller side and on the target side. And when the controller uh, decides this is the right time to verify the tags, it just reads uh, the tag from the, from the target and compare them to the expected value and can determine whether uh, there was an error or not. There's also an option to read the tag via embedded data instead of making a read access. So um, I, in interest of time, I will just uh, jump this. Uh, uh, this is in the material. Let me go to the display service extension. Um, we have lots of time. There's no reason to rush. So I can come back if we, depending on the question. <laughs> um, so uh, what we have been doing in the uh, display service extension. So of course, as I mentioned before, um, with SEP is similar, similar methodology. We use SEP for DSE like CSE in the version 1.0. Now, with display, there are some additional uh, functional safety requirements that uh, come up. Um, and we add support. Um, oh, wait, I, sorry, I jumped too many pages. We add uh, support for uh, new things. So instead of having uh, um, uh, the SEP uh, verification, like on every message, we have FSET protocol that verify the whole frame the old DSI2 frame. So uh, what we have here, you can see there's a video frame. And uh, so during the blanking, you can have uh, in uh, here represented in green, zero or more uh, DSI or TCS command to uh, configure or control the, the, the display. And then you have the active area, which happened to be a dashboard here in this case. Um, and uh, and then at the end of the active area, there's a small FZ packet in orange, as you can see there. Um, and this FZ packet in orange contains all the functional safety and security extension data for that frame. It contains frame number, the CRCs, and the MACs that are required. So, um, and there are separate uh, uh, CRC and MAC for the active area, which are really the pixel data we are interested in. 
and uh, different uh, mark and crc for the transport uh, uh, data which are kind of uh, metadata for use use used for the display command and control so all the let's say the green blocks which are above or below yeah and why do we have uh, so many crc because um there might be a, a lot of region of interest so we can support up to 16 region of interest and this region of interest may overlap and uh so let's say for example if you check a crc for the whole frame and there is one pixel which is wrong well you will have a crc failing but maybe this is an area which is not interesting because this is a, a place which is uh, let's say one part of the black uh, uh, dot here uh, but what we want to know is uh, to have a better diagnosis uh, oh if it is uh, the uh, uh, error uh, icon which is coming or uh, um, or the the the, the speed uh, dash uh, which is there or the fuel so you will have different treatment so if we have a crc for each of these region of interest we are able to have some differentiation and uh, make uh, different treatment of the error according to the uh, region of interest in which uh, we detected a failure. Yeah, so it provides more diagnosis. So this is one thing. Uh, the second thing is the support for compression in uh, DSC. Um, so of course, uh, um, visually lossless compression with uh, Beza DSC and uh, VDCN. Um, it provides a very good uh, uh, image quality, but this is uh, visually lossless. It's not um, completely uh, lossless. So how to check CRC on compressed image uh, if it is lossy? So what we are doing is that uh, due to the way the DSC and VDCM are specified is that in the compression engine, they have so-called uh, re reconstructed pixel uh, element. So when you are comp compressing the image data, you have not only the compressed data, but you have also uh, uh, reconstructed pixel data um, to check uh, how good is the compression quality. And what we do is that we take this reconstructed pixel data and we calculate CRC on this reconstructed pixel data because they will match exactly to the same uh, 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 CRC uh, af after the uh, decompressed uh, data on the display side. And now, due to the fact that uh, the compression engine is organized by slices, and there can be many, many slices, uh, having too many CRC for all the slices may not be very efficient. So what we have done is that we define slice colon. Um, so a colon which contains uh, a number of slices, and for this slice colon, we calculate a CRC, and each slice colon has its own CRC. And here we can even combine a uh, compressed uh, data stream with uh, ROI and compress uh, and, and, and check CRC for slice colon of a specific uh, ROI. Um, and what we are trying to do is to align uh, the method for CRC calculation between MIPI and VESA. Uh, in order to have exactly the same uh, signature on the CRC, uh, which will ease uh, the use of, of heterogeneous uh, system uh, in automotive, and uh, for yeah, which will use the it will be easier to use that uh, like that. Um, what else? Yeah, okay, I think that's it. So let me now summarize here. Um, so. Uh, we've seen mass uh, framework is leveraging and extending well proven protocol like the CSI2, GSI2, DisplayPort, and so on. It provides a standardized framework to enable both end to end functional safety and security protection at the application protocol level. And when we say the application protocol level, we really mean the pixels. Huh? This is where uh, where is the application uh, in case of uh, edge devices like sensor or display? Yeah? Um, and then we consider both the data plane with a set protocol and FSET protocol, depending on the granularity, what you want to, to have, message or frame, and the control plane with the uh, CCISE protocol.
We provide flexibility with message-based and frame-based protection to enable the system integrator trade-offs. There are also some advanced self-testing and error injection feature for higher functional safety uh, diagnosis level. So AFI and MAS uh, architect for seamless integration into sensors and providing an optimal, robust and resilient solution for automotive safety application. And now I'm okay to move to the Q&A. Great, okay. Ariel, thank you very much. Uh, I will now open it for Q&A in the Q&A session. I've received one question, a couple of questions in the back uh, channel, so I'm going to start with that. But for those who can, uh, who wish to ask more questions, uh, please go ahead and, and enter that in the Q&A section. So, RL, here's your first question. How do you think the complete MIPI mass end-to-end -end program will impact the industry's advanced driver assistance systems, or called ADAS? How do you think it'll impact those solutions? Well, it will, uh, at first, uh, it will uh, make it uh, faster and simpler to integrate uh, into a system. Because having a standard approach for um, defining uh, functional safety and security uh, enable, uh, let's say, a functional safety review uh, by auditor at uh, a different customer, I say, okay, so this part, this is a standard way we review one time and we know how it is done. Uh, that's okay. Of course, there are a lot of other parts that need to be done, but at least on the interface standard, uh, this is easier. Yeah, because it is reviewed once, uh, once for all. Um, uh, then it provides the end to end uh, protection. It means it simplifies the work of the bridges and all the forwarding elements which are in between. You don't need to worry about. Uh, link based protection uh, and so on. Because uh, whatever will come in the link will be detected at the upper layer there. So it, it will make the integration uh, much easier. And all this additional uh, built in self testing and diagnostic that we add there uh, will enable a faster uh, debug of the system and uh, self checking uh, whether everything is uh, running. As expected uh, or not, so it, it will help a lot the integration of the system. I think. Yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, Matthew Tivinen has asked a question. For cameras, are both SEP and FSED support mandatory, or can it support only one of those schemes? Uh, no, you can select to support either SEP or FSED. Great. So it's optional. You can select either one or the other. Matthew says thanks. Next right. question from Rao. Complying to mass architecture, what is the level ASOL user and customers should be able to achieve? Well, okay. So now it depends on your application. So typically, you'll be able to uh, reach uh, ASILB with that. Uh, but of course, it depends. How you are handling your uh, what are the actions that you are taking after you get the error detection uh, there? So as I said before, the, the the processing of the after the error detection depends on the application. So one application uh, may have uh, less requirement, and some other application will have higher requirement on that, and they will check much more diagnosis uh, than other. So, but typically the measure that we have uh, uh, taken in MIPI for the detection of errors will enable ACLB there. Okay, uh, we have a related question that came in through the back channel, and this is specific to AFI. The question is, how will AFI handle the ISO 26262 Functional safety requirements, and again, this is specific to A5. Yeah. So, uh, as I explained before, so the A5, each A5 packet has its own message counter and uh, CRC. So this is the first thing. 
then there is a timeout monitoring uh, on the A5 that uh, in case uh, there is a uh, the, the, the link is frozen for whatever reason, it's possible on the other side to detect. So the, the free condition of the redundancy, uh, message counter and um, timeout monitoring are there. In addition to that, we have all this uh, beast uh, 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 packet generation in the A5 to enable higher level diagnosis. So uh, that's quite a lot there. And I'm not talking, I'm just talking about functional safety measure. I'm not talking about the uh, resilience of the A5, which Arj will uh, address later on with a very uh, low packet error rate of 10 to the minus 19. Great. Yeah. Okay, everybody, I'm going to ask one last time for questions. And if there are no further questions, we will pause, let everyone take a break until the top of the hour. So let me first pause and ask. Are there any other outstanding questions that you'd like to ask Ariel live? And if there are, please enter them in the chat session by clicking the three dots in the bottom right and then clicking the Q&A submission box. All right, everybody hearing and seeing no further questions. Yeah, I, I would see like to question. thank you. Uh, I think you've answered both of these questions. Yeah. No, it's about the uh, slice column. Uh, yes. oh, no, no, so slice. I, I want to emphasize there's a question about the reconstructed pixel. Uh, the reconstructed pixel oh. are really uh, done on the, the CRC are calculated on the reconstructed pixel, not on the uh, compressed pixel. I think once you will get the, the slides, you will see uh, where the things are coming from. Okay, great. Yeah, sorry, I'm not seeing uh, that reconstructed pixel question. Maybe you got that directly. Okay, everybody. Well, uh, hearing no other questions, uh, thank you very much, Ariel.